Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is a Soviet Russian bear and to me uh, today this is a, there is a returning guest, uh, Georgian Patriot 1998. So today is the 10 year anniversary of um, the, uh, the Russo-Georgian war, war of uh, 80808. So please, uh, um, Georgian Patriot uh, 1998, could you tell us the history of uh, the Georgian Ossetian Abkhazia conflict? Why, where, when, and why did it all begin? Oh, first of all, I just want to say thank you for having me on again. It's like I think the fourth time I've been on your show, so I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the thing is, this goes a lot. The history of this goes way further than uh, 2008. I think he goes even further before the collapse of Soviet Union. But uh, tensions with these uh, two, it's not just Ossetia, it was Abkhazia too. Tensions with uh, Georgia and those two uh, separatist regions were going on around this time, right before the collapse. Same thing with the Karabakh in Armenia and Azerbaijan. But uh, th this came from something, and then people don't really know where this comes from. So I didn't do some research uh, for the last two years. Before I met you, I was doing some research on this stuff. Yeah. And uh, I found out, actually, uh, the problem was where this independent thing come from, you know, the separatism. It's not new. You know, it's just, this, is, this was going on a hundred, almost 100 years ago. So what happened was, in, after Tsarist Russia fell down, right, and uh, yeah. all the... Uh, former Russian Empire territories became, you know, new countries, you know, some were lasted longer than others, right? But Georgia was independent from 1918 to 1921. So, and if you look at the map of Georgia at this time, it was much bigger than it is now. So it's not just Russia's fault, but Turkey took a lot of territory too. I'll explain. So in 1921, after Azerbaijan and Armenia became part of Soviet Union, uh, Georgia was next. It was the last one they took in the Caucasus. So when they invade, they didn't just invade them by themselves. Uh, Ottoman, not Ottoman, uh, Atatürk, there's no Ottoman Empire. Atatürk's Turkey attacked Georgia from the um, western side and uh, occupied the territory and the Bolsheviks from the north so, and the south. So when this happened, that uh, Lenin Turkey agreement that they would give the, a lot of the western Georgia, which was, was it? It was they were Georgian, so they would give them to Turkey. Same thing with Armenia. A lot of Armenia was given to Turkey. And Russia would uh, now have so Soviet Georgia, so Georgian SSR, right? That's what it would be called. But the thing is, as well, is that some territories would be given to uh, uh, not Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan and Armenia, very small parts. I'll show a, a screenshot of it in the, here when I edit this, when I enhance the video. But the thing is also, they didn't stop there. They actually, the early Bolshevik government, uh, made autonomous regions. They made this throughout the country, not just Georgia. They made Abkhazian SSR, they made Ossetian SSR, and they made Ajaran SSR. Now, Ajara is next to Turkey. This is yeah. what, this is Batumi. No, if, uh, this is the only separatist, well, not separatist, this is the only autonomous region that no problems happened, thank God. You know, Turkey didn't do anything. Yeah. So, so that's good. But, uh, these two, unfortunately, did get in this problem. But the thing is, they were actually their own republics for a few years. I think for, for 10 years, I think, from 1921 to 1931. In 1931, uh, the Stalin government put them back into Georgian SSR. But they were still autonomous. They didn't dissolve the autonomy. But they, they were no longer separate. They were now part of, you know, Georgian SSR. But then now, they will say... People will say uh, from Abkhazia or Seti will say, "Oh, we were never part of Georgia." You know, well, if you look at the names of the cities, it tells you, you know, Sinvali's Georgian name, uh, Suhumi's Georgian name, uh, Mangrelians, which is like a subgroup of Georgians, uh, lived in the Suhumi. My family lived there, so this was to be Georgian people. And uh, unfortunately, after the Soviet Union collapse or before the Soviet Union collapse, ethnic tensions happened there. Now, I don't know what happened in Abkhazia, really. It's really confusing because Abkhazia, like, they're Caucasian people and they're Georgians. Many of them were living there. I don't know what, what the fuck happened there. I really don't know. But Ossetians are different people, okay? They're not even Caucasian. There are, I guess they're Iranic people. Last I checked, they yeah. studied them. They're not even from, really from, you know, they're not Caucasian genetically. But thing is, they, 
you know, I guess were disenfranchised or something. What was going on? I guess they wanted to. They seeked, like like in Kosovo, the same thing. You know, they wanted their own independent state or something. And this is what happened. And then, 1992, right? It started the civil war. Yeah. After the steps. And uh, this was under the what was his name? Gams Harkhudia was Georgian president at this yeah. time. And it was a civil war between actually his faction. He actually fled. He fled actually to Chechnya. He fled there, but then he died later. And between him and uh, Shervanadze, who was former uh, Soviet foreign minister, I think of yeah, um, yeah, he was. So he became second president. But the civil war was still going, and at this time that they were now no longer really controlled by Georgian government, Abkhazia and Ossetia. Uh, uh, and could not they didn't, they didn't control them anymore, so they were their own thing. They were kind of like rogue state, yeah. sort of, right? But then here comes 2003, I think, comes this uh, color revolution. Yeah, the rose of the revolution. Yeah, it's called the rose. Uh, rose. It comes this Columbia University educated uh, guy, very, you know, young guy, he's 36 <laughs> years old, uh, Saakashvili comes there, yeah. and he you know, kicks Shervanadze out. Shervanadze didn't die, he just get kicked out. Yeah. And he, he died in 2014, I think. But anyway, uh, he was removed by force, actually. It, it was a coup. It was a coup. I don't like Shervanadze, but that was a coup yeah. on his behalf. So Saakashvili comes there, and initially, he seems like, you know, he's like, oh my god, this nice guy, you know, he's going to do great things, you know, he's got, you know, li- you know he's got vision. And, you know, initially he wasn't against Russia, you know, like I talked about in the Armenian video we did last time, was the video you uploaded with me in it. I talked about that. He wasn't against Russia initially, but yeah. he always, he actually really started to show his colors a little bit in the year, years go on. He actually even, to, to get NATO and to um, European Union to accept Georgia, he went to actually to Afghanistan and to Iraq. He actually, that was the only non-NATO country, one of the few non-NATO countries that went there. So he was trying to kiss, you know, NATO's ass. You know, he went yeah. there, which was a very stupid idea. Why would he, you know, why would they do that? You know, what was the point? But whatever, they go there, and they were doing this. Russian and uh, what was it called? Putin and Saakashvili met many times. This is, uh, you know, I can show you. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, put the, I'll put the clip maybe if necessary. But they met many times. There's pictures of them. You know how big Saakashvili is in, in Putin. But anyway, they were, you know, I guess it was fine. But in 2006, I think is when the relations start to deteriorate. Uh, there were some issues going on. Uh, what was going on there? You know, sort of. But then, then they resolved it. So it's a, and then as we skip to 2008 is when the. Yeah. Beijing uh, Olympics. Uh, Olympic Summer Games, Olympics. yeah. Summer, Summer Olympics. Olympics, yeah. Yes, and uh, it was during this time which Putin wasn't even in his country at the time. I think he yeah, was. He, he was in China. He was in China. Yes. Yeah. And this is when uh, the Georgian government did this surprise attack on Sinvali, uh, the South Ossetian capital, and uh, killed a lot of peacekeepers, killed a lot of people. You know, it was kind of very traitor, very nasty thing to do. So then uh, Putin, you know, hear about this and he come back and then, you know, he wasn't president, he was prime minister. It was Medvedev was president at this time. But anyway, yeah, yeah. they, you know, re, you know, they saw what happened. They said, okay, this is, bull, you know, this is, this is not right. So then they yeah. retaliated back and they uh, went to, they went down it was from North Ossetia, which is there. They went yeah. down to Ossetia very quickly and they dealt, they got rid of, they pushed Georgian army to retreat. They pushed them to Gori, right? They pushed them out. Yeah. To uh, five days. This is the five day war. This is a very quick war. Yeah. And uh, afterwards, then Russian government recognized, it. and then now they're formally recognized, uh, you know, Ossetia and Abkhazia as an yeah, independent yeah. state. And then later, Venezuela and a few other countries recognized. Uh, yeah. Yes. It's, it's Syria recognized. Yeah. So this is where this happened. Now, when this happened, when they attacked, uh, Georgia attacked, and then all this sub- situation happened. Most of the Western media would just say this is Russian aggression. Russia started it. Yeah. Russia, it's, <laughs> it's not true. So you know, and uh, I actually have an EU report, and they talked about that. It was Georgia who started this. Uh, I'll show the li- in the link description, and I'll yeah, pull yeah. It out from here. But it was the Georgian army attacked first, and they did uh, you know really bullshit things. They you know did a lot of crimes over there. I'm not saying they were genociding people because only a hundred or so. Ossetians died in a hundred, you know, but it's still, it was a forceful invasion to uh, take this territory. Not with diplomacy, it was to forcefully take this. Uh, without talking to Russia, just they just did it backstep, you know, backstep kind of thing they did over there. But no one knows is that the uh, 
there's a lot of connections with Georgian troops who are trained by United States. I'm going to read this. Uh, U European Union and the, and Israel. Israel, Israel too. So you had all these three, you know, Atlantis system. Then you have Israel too, you know, and they are funding, you know, this. Uh, they they train the Georgian troops. They give them weaponry, drones, airplanes, you know, everything, guns. And the Georgians who were fought in Afghanistan, you know, they think, oh, we're so tough now, we can, you know, we can take this back. Very stupid idea, and they, we we see what happened. Yeah. But now. Uh, if these these are still uh, you know they never get anything nothing happened and I'm gonna read uh, while we go about this but that's pretty much the history of it and the history of it right now as it stands is that these two are still independent countries Georgia yeah. also like I said they uh, terminated relationship with Russia they uh, cut off ties yeah, yeah official official ties I mean they still do some trade it's just not official there's no like you know, prime minister shaking with Putin's hand anymore. It, it doesn't happen. Yeah. Even after Sarkozy was, you know, re removed, they, you know, no, they still don't do it. But uh, that's the situation there. So you can uh, continue yeah, now. Um, yeah. Thank you for uh, this uh, insightful um, story. But still, I want to ask you about, like, people, um, <clears throat> I hear that the, um, most Georgian people in Georgia right now, they don't blame Russia despite the propaganda. They don't blame Russia for this uh, for this war, but um, they really do. They really like blame Saakashvili and his uh, puppet masters for the beginning of this war. Well, you see, it's Can very you interesting say, for the majority oh, yeah. of. Well, what I would say is that uh, I showed you a video privately once of how there are yeah. Georgians who are very want relationships to be reestablished uh, re with Russia, and yeah. many Georgians do want some normalization. You know, they don't, they, they see the impact this has, and nothing good is happening. No, what the, what's the point? And anyway, and uh, most Georgians do say that yes, I actually made a mistake. Even I think the patriarch, uh, his name was uh, Ilya, the you know the Orthodox yeah. head, he said this was not a good idea. <laughs> so. The head, the religious leader, which you know, Georgian people look up to, you know, yeah. he said this is wrong, and uh, you know he, he, you know, the psychology is a lot to blame. But you know, Georgians are not really mad at Russia. You know, my father personally and a few of my relatives not really don't head against Russia. This is they just don't like Ossetians. It's like Serbians don't like Kosovo. You know, this, this yeah, yeah. Uh, thing. It's like it's like this Balkan situation, which is unfortunate. You know, like Balkanized freaking yeah. Caucasus. Which is very, it's very, you know, very messed up. But that's what happened over there. So, but yeah, they, they blame Sarkozy for the, the, you know, what happened recently. But they also say, yeah, Ossetians were, you know, were kind of starting it, you know. Yeah. But it's not really Russia's fault. Russia was just supporting, I guess, their ally. You know, that was what they were doing. And also, Russia really had no. I was reading the, this report here that, you know, Ossetians were doing a lot of messed up things, but Russia was really couldn't control that. You know, Russia really wasn't in charge of this. They didn't, they didn't tell them to. They, they just did it because it's just ethnic hate. Uh, dislike you can't really control people when they're like so angry so that's what happened they went loose so but now the situation is that uh i was reading this on the news that uh ossetia you know they have a little border now right they have like this, yeah. this fence in ossetia i know i say that maybe not because you but i was reading this and i was watching a video the border is where the you know this is georgian side this is ossetian side now yeah. i hear that they're moving a little bit that the wires are moving closer and they capture a few. This is Ossetians doing this now. They're capturing um, what's it called Georgian farmers who are right next to the border. They detain them for a few days and then they release them. So there's still a lot of issues going on over there. Uh, I don't see anything really better with us and Ossetians. I don't. I don't see anything better. But I, you know, I think the situation could be resolved. It could have been resolved a long time ago. You know, it could have been resolved. You know, a lot of yeah. things could have been resolved. You know, but it's it's as of right now, it's still not really good situation. Georgians can't go there. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I think it's hard for anyone to go there, except for Russians, I think. It's very hard for anyone to even go to these territories. Yeah. It's a pain has to go there. And it's unfortunate that people who lived in, especially in Abkhazia, who lived there for many years, they don't live there anymore. They can't go back home. So it's, it's a very shitty state of affairs, but, you know, that's, that's what's going on. But, yeah, most people do blame the government. And, you know, he's in trouble. So actually, even this new government, who is still... Kind of kiss ass to NATO. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're very angry at him because he did a lot of yeah. he did a lot of stuff things in Georgia too. You know, he did a lot of 
a lot of bad things. You know, a lot of rumors and a lot of stuff he was doing is very bad. Uh, so they want him, and he and here he is, you know, running around. He was in Ukraine last year or a few months ago, whatever, trying to overthrow or something, do his own thing over there. He, he was an Odessan governor. In Ukraine, yeah. Yeah, he was everywhere. You know, if Saakashvili just shut up after 2012 and just never yeah. appeared again, and he lived in the Netherlands with his wife and his son. He has a son. Yeah. His son is younger than yeah, me. Yeah, I know, he I know. Should, he should prior to our, uh, yeah, this is for the few viewers, though. You know, he should take care of his son. You know, it's not fucking, you know, trying to do this. You know, I saw him on Fox News a few, uh, two weeks ago. He was yeah. there for two minutes, and he was like, Russia. He was just talking shit about Russia for two minutes, and then he they, then they kicked him off. <laughs> so I don't know. He's he's just wasting his time. I don't know what his mental. He's something wrong with him. You know, he even eat his fucking tie once on you know national. <laughs> the Georgian president chews over his next move. Is he weaker or stronger than before? Dude, he's, yeah, he's yeah. Something wrong with him. But uh, he's good friends with John McCain and all these other people. And you yeah. got good connections. He's serving his purpose, you know. I think he's he's being told to do this. I don't think because he, he's he's crazy, you know. He's a uh, he's a wanted person. He's a wanted criminal in Georgia. Yeah. They put a lot of his former I mean, government officials in jail in Georgia. So he knows if he goes back, you know, it's not going to be a good situation for him. For him, yeah. But people are legitimately angry at him now, and they very are, you know. And they, my mom even said, "What's this piece of shit on TV? You know, he should be, you know." <laughs> Because no one likes him anymore. I mean, yeah, when he came in, you know, he had this, like, you know, nice face. You know, he had black hair. Now he's got gray hair. He's fat. You know, he looks like shit. You know, he looks yeah. like, like drugs or something. Like, just just, yeah. just, just, just stop, you know. But he's still, yeah. he's there, you know. He's still kicking, I guess. Yeah, he's probably on drugs and, well, <laughs> on, yeah. on, on cocaine or some shit. I don't know. So, he's still. Yeah. Well, I remember myself. Uh, I was I was a student at the university when this war happened, and I remember I watched the media, and I remember though, I'm you know I speak very good English, and um, um, I, I watched the Western coverage. Um, the internet was available, uh, and uh, I watched uh, the Western, uh, and just right away they blamed Russia. They said, "Oh, it's Russian aggression, Russian aggression," and I remember. And I remember the CNN host, or I don't know, was CNN or CB, CBS, I don't remember exactly. Um, the girl and her mother, they were speaking the truth. Fox News. That was yeah, Fox, Fox News. News. Yeah, that was Fox News. Yeah. Um, so a girl and her mother were speaking the truth. And and the, um, the host of the show, he was kind of like, he was like... He, he, he cut it off. He cut it off. Yeah, yeah. he cut it off. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll play that clip, actually. When I edit this video, I'll play yeah. it right here. I want you to know to whom to blame or, 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 and this conflict. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Saakashvili who started this war and Mr. Saakashvili who is aggressor and who, who, who in two days uh, my, my people, Ossetian people, were killed and were under bombed and 2,000 people were killed in I, one day I, I, and I, that's what I am against. I would never and, cut you uh, off. Unfortunately, a commercial break will take us there in four seconds whether we like yeah, it or not. I, I'll bring I know you back that after you the don't, commercial. You don't we'll want right to back. hear that. I'll be right yeah. back with you. Thank Stay, you. stay by. Yeah, but, 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 but back, back then, uh, did you actually believe uh, that it was actually a uh, Russian invasion? Did you fall for the propaganda at first? Well, Come on, I was like, you should be honest because this was 10 years ago. So, yeah, yeah. we all make so, mistakes, you see. Yeah, well, I was 10, so I don't know. But I do remember my parents would tell me all oh, this shit was happening with Russia. And then even in school, I remember this. Like, I was 10. Like I said, this is 10 years ago. I'm like 20, 19 now, you know. Yeah. And you're, 10, you're, much, you're 10 years older than me. So yeah. you were in college. I was just in like... I don't know what grade I was, fourth grade or some shit. I don't know yeah. how old I was. But uh, I was in school, and then my uh, ESL, which is like uh, English second language, you know, yeah. like to improve your English, you know, yeah. like foreign, you know, speak, speak Georgian. So he told me, uh, he was talking to us. He was like a small group of kids. I think it was me. I'm not going to be super specific. It was you know, a few kids there. Yeah. And uh, one of them is, one of them was a black kid there. I'm going to mention why. And he said, do you know what happened in Georgia? This my my uh, English ASL teacher said, yeah. and this other stupid kid thought it was it was about the state of Georgia. He said, "Oh, it started raining or some stupid shit." And he said, "No." He said he was talking about the country of Georgia. He said, "There's a war." He said, "You know about this, right?" He said, "Yes, I know." And he starts saying uh, about you know Russia did this, and 
I was just kind of going, yeah, you know, whatever, you know, because I was like, yeah, whatever. I was a child, so. Yeah. But I, yeah, most people in the West and this teacher, he knew about it. It was on the TV, and uh, you know, you saw Bush make press coverage, and what's her name, the secretary, Connor Lisa Rice, was on TV. Yeah, yeah. Saying about the oh, this is you know, Russia. You know, stop attacking Georgia or something. So you know, many people did fall for it. Uh, I, like I said, I was a kid, so I guess I kind of fell for it. Just like I just, I was kind of like, okay, whatever, you know. But, you know, I started to learn about this at five, how many years ago? Three, four years ago, actually. This is one of the few things I started to learn. I slowly learned it myself. I just, I just studied it. I studied it, and I looked at, uh, Putin was on the RT. Now, you know, people don't like yeah. RT, but whatever. he was talking. He was talking to Shevardnadze's daughter. She's on RT. Her name is yeah. Sophie. Sophie, Sophia yeah. Shevardnadze. And uh, she talked to him in Russian. She said, you know, I have Georgian relatives, you know, and I, you know, they love to come to Russia. And he said, about the relations. This was 2012. And Putin said, I, I want to make good relations with Georgia, he said this. I'll play the clip. We want to restore relations with Georgia. We are very close to Georgia. We are very close to the people of Georgia. And вот вы здесь живете, да, вы имеете гражданство. Но сколько грузин живет в России, и достижениями которых Россия гордится, как достижениями своих граждан? Я же не буду много вспоминать про войну 1819 года. Да? И мы знаем, кого я имею в виду, но и, и в советский период, и, и сейчас тоже. And he said, yeah, yeah. we have historically from Tsarist era, Soviet era, even modern times, you know, we have, we have good history with Georgia. And I like the, he even say, like, you know, the, 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 uh, the head, Ilya, which the patriarch is like the best, you know, what's it called, um, symbol of Georgia, you know, he's a good man. And yeah. he met him, he met him around 2012 too, there's a video of it, you know, they met each other. So he said, I, I want to normalize relationship. So Putin certainly wants to fix the relationship. He said it himself. He he seems he's he's sincerely honest. He said that to Sharon Nancy. She, 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 she goes to Georgia. I, I saw her Instagram post. She goes there every you know whenever she can, and you know Georgians want to go to Russia now. Georgians can go to Russia now. It's not that hard. But back then it was a little bit of a pain. Yes, the visa. Yeah, yeah. But but yeah. So Russia at least and now Putin's in president. So you know yeah. he, he's really if 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 the government were to change, I guarantee Putin would be okay with it. I'm sure because he himself said it on the TV that. Yeah, I want to make uh, relations with Georgia, you know, and uh, he, this was during the Sochi, I think this was during the Sochi, I don't know, 2014, but this was during the Sochi Olympics, right? Uh, 2014. Yeah, Sochi won, yeah. yeah. So I don't know what this interview was, it was around this time, and uh, he was talking about, uh, there were some terrorists, I don't know, they were Georgian terrorists or something, from Abkhazia, they were going to Abkhazia, they were going to attack in Sochi or something, something was going on over there. And he said this is this is a very ser uh, serious uh, security situation. But actually, he said the Georgian government. But I don't think it was Saakashvili anymore. He was he was gone by this time. They were willing to help out with security. The Georgian government. Uh, yeah. The new one that's there. So overall, like I said, now Georgian like uh, If you go to Russia, they have Georgian you know seltzer warbord only. They have wine. They got all these products. Georgian cheese. Yeah. Lots of Russian people I see, like, you know, they, they like to visit Georgia, so, and Georgians too, so this is, it, as a whole, the people get along, you know, very well. Uh, it's not like yeah. with the West, that's a problem when you live in, if you live here in the America, or you, Europe is not as bad, but here, it's really bad here because you, you're so separated, you're like in the freaking Atlantic Ocean, you know, you have no yeah. connection. You know, and you think that, oh, they all hate each other, it's all bad, George, you know, someone told me, you hate Russia, and I said, no, <laughs> no, I don't hate Russia, yeah. most of us don't. Actually, I have a Georgian actually rooting for Russia in the World Cup. So most people don't really have anything against Russia anymore. It's just the political hacks and some people who are really brainwashed, unfortunately, some of them. Yeah. Uh, most national Georgian nationalists are not that brainwashed, uh, hopefully, most of them, actually. They just yeah. EU, fuck, you know, that's the thing. That's unfortunate. Yeah. You know, if Georgian nationalists, why the fuck is saying about Ukraine? If you're going to be against... Moscow, why are you friends with Brussels in America or yeah. London, right? That's the problem. And I told them this. I told actually my well, one of my cousins actually he said, oh, Russia started. Well, listen, you don't want Russian influence, right? but then, then fuck the NATO and fuck the EU. Do your yeah. own thing. You know, they're a criminal. They're a North American terrorist organization. You know, <laughs> why, <laughs> you want to be part of, why you want to be part of them? Actually, mm -hmm. I'm going to mention this. Actually, NATO always pretends that they care for, you know, protecting, you know, people from Russia, right? Yeah. They always pretend. You know, I realized the closer the country is to Russia, 
yeah. or the regions to Russia, the less they're afraid of Russia. You see, we notice this, right? Eastern Ukraine, Belarus, uh, North Georgia, and uh, you know Azerbaijan. You know, in the bare border, Kazakhstan, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's them. Even the Finland, the East Finland, and the Northern Norway. You know, Northern Norway has a yeah, border. Yeah. Sure. They said this guy was he was a Norwegian guy. He said, yeah, most people, if you live with Russia, you live near Russians, you have nothing. To, they don't fear them. But it's more the more you're you know away from them, the more they, the propaganda kicks in. Yeah. Because Second World War, I'm not going to get into it deep in this. Russia actually went to Norway, Northern Norway, to kick out yeah. the Germans. They were there, right? They threw them out. Yeah. And uh, there's a there's a it's called they were called it's called Finnmark not Finland Finnmark it's just a yeah. little territory in northern Norway and they you know they met the Norwegian uh, political generals and then they left they left peacefully so they always say yeah. so occupants they left <laughs> they left immediately you know and they get along just fine so it's just the thing is that people like to have, have like this kind of thing that oh the, the same with the Baltics it's oh the evil Russians are coming to are coming the Reds are coming you know they're coming for you yeah. To, to, to oppress you, but the more close you are to Russia, the, you know, the more you realize that it's it's all bullshit. You know, people you don't get this brainwashed. Actually, NATO was planning to nuke. Actually, this is this is this is I found this yet a few a uh, few weeks ago. I didn't mention this to you, but I'll just put I'll start to you later. They were planning to nuke Finnmark actually to test it or something, because you know they were afraid of Russians going over the Soviets going over there. So NATO was willing to nuke Norway, which was part of NATO. Yeah. <laughs> To 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 to, to uh, show the you know to you know to prevent Russia from invading or something to prevent the you know you know evil Soviets or something so it's just it just shows that NATO doesn't give a shit about their allies they really don't they just want they just, they just want control they don't really yeah. care about anyone's national sovereignty they don't care they piss on it you know and they still to this day they uh, in Poland they. Doing these military rules, which is Poland's right in you know Russia's face. Yeah. And they're just right there, haha, you know, we're building troops. Uh, Trump is doing the same thing. You know, he's funding these people. He's yeah. doing the same thing. He's I know he's trying to I think people say he people like to call him a Russian agent, all this stupid shit, these leftists. I mean, look at what he's doing. He's finding the Ukrainian rebels and all this stuff. Yeah. And he's doing military drills in Poland and I'm sure in the Baltic states, which yeah. was former Soviet territory, you know, and this how how angry this must make Putin or a Russian government. Yeah. So that's yeah. that situation. Yes, yes, absolutely agree. And you see, I know there is was this is Hollywood direct director Rennie Harlan, and he actually made a movie. It's called The Phase of War. Well, you know where the Russians were shown as like this. The Russian army was shown as this savages who kill and rob people and shoot them against. To put them against the wall and shoot them and all that stuff. You see, mm, there since the since the Russo-Georgian War, this five days war, there was kind of there has been a kind of revival of the Cold War style of propaganda. Yes, and this is true. This is where it started. I think this was the first major conflict of 20th, 20th century in this kind of regard because you know Ukraine didn't start until later. Yeah. So, but they had their color revolution, I think, in one of the Central Asian countries too. Well, I don't forget, yeah. was Kyrgyzstan or Tajik? One, one of them. Kyrgyzstan, yeah. Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan, they had their own thing going on over there. You know, kind of they're kind of friendly with NATO. Yeah. So, you know, they there. That was the first major start, and you know, Bush was the one who was pushing for it. I think during the debate, Clinton and oh, not Clinton, the Obama and the yeah. debating Hollywood handled the handled the situation. You know, like they were there, all this. It's a big. Political, you know, how are we going to solve this? It was only five days anyway, but <laughs> they were, they, there was a debate, you know, they were talking about, you know, they, were, they both had similar opinions, you know, they're all, the, you know, they're all the same, you know, to be honest with you, but, uh, you know, I went to Germany in 2012, this was before Secretary was, you know, yeah. finally, she was going there, we support Georgia against Russia, you know, she was there, you know, she went to, actually, I was in Georgia at that time, you know, I was like 12 or something, yeah. I was there and she, she came before I did actually the plane she left or I went and my plane arrived you know my commercial plane flight yeah. and she was saying you know you have got a great president here you know he's doing great things even Trump you know Trump actually went mailed, built some towers or he was planning to build some towers and when somebody was president yeah, there's a video of there's pictures of them on the internet you know yeah. shaking so he knows he knows Trump personally uh Socrates. and he said oh yeah this is a great president you know he's doing great things and all this and I'm not gonna lie I mean 
Virgin now is much better than it was, you know, 2003, right? You know, yeah. but he, he caused a lot of damage. You know, Georgia has a lot of debt. I don't, they have a lot of money. Debt. Now, nothing's like the U.S., but they have a lot of debt compared to Armenia and Azerbaijan, which Azerbaijan has oil, so, you know, they could help, they could help them. But this war and these sales they did, which I'm going to talk about with the Israel and America, and the debt. Georgia has a lot of debt, you know, and has a lot of economic problems. A lot of people can't even afford, the older people can't even afford food. So, yeah, I mean, it looks nice. I mean, Batumi has nice buildings, right? It looks nice, you know, like yeah. Baku. And Tbilisi, too, they really invested. But the rest of Georgia is like a rural countryside, which is not really bad, but it just shows that you know, only few cities, you know, benefited, right, of, oh, technology, oh, it looks so great. It's just two or three cities. Gori looks pretty much the same. All of them look the same, you know. It's just normal lifestyle. And uh, people, you know, st like I said, very poor people over there. You know, their, their poverty in America is nothing compared to what they experience. Like I said, they have very small pension over there, and they have a hard time to uh, – I saw this old couple. They're Armenians, but they live in Georgia, and they said – you know, he sells yogurt, you know, like yogurt in the, in the glass yeah, can. Yeah. And he just, that's his life. This poor old man walking around Georgia, southern Georgia, you know, selling. It's called matzoni. It's called like, you know, just old, plain yogurt. Plain yeah. yogurt. Not not flavored. It's just plain old white yogurt. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and this, that's how most people live. You know, they're not living such, you know, great life. You know, a lot of, after so you fell down, a lot of um, not used, they left it, factories. You know, were abandoned. This happened throughout this whole former Soviet Union. You know, that's why actually I think they actually invited South Africans, which Russia is doing too now, it's inviting them to kind of fertilize the land and to use the land to you know kind of yeah. run production again. It, just, it was just it was just abandoned. So you know, the point is that this man was you know studying Columbia University, right? Sakashvili. You know, I guess he I guess they groomed him. I think they groomed him because I think. My grandmother was a teacher of this school. I forget the school's name in Georgia. She was a teacher, his English teacher. He learned English, I think, from her. And he was in that school. She taught him. And my father went to that school, too. He didn't know him personally. But my, my grandmother taught him as a student. And, you know, and then he get this kind of, I think, he's, he was 36 when he became president. So I guess he was young, like right before yeah. school. He went to, went to America, Columbia, New York City, which is very, you know, left, you know, like, you know, politically correct, you know, all this stuff. They they kind of made this politician. They made Sakashvili in, in Colombia. They molded this, this character in America. So I guess maybe he was more before, but then they uh, when he here they made their own. They made this new guy. Okay, we could use this guy. He's a uh, yeah. He'll be really cool for us. He was good friends for John McCain and everybody. <laughs> but yeah, they always do that. They always groom for future politicians. Because that's what really found very suspicious, right? You know, he, he, he studied there. He was a lawyer, Georgian lawyer. Oh, so smart, you know, guy, you know, studied in Columbia University. I'm not jealous of it. I'm just saying. He just shows you he studied there. It's like it's like if he went to Yale or to Harvard, you know. You, you see where his mentality comes from. Why he became he's so pro-West? Why was he kissing the America's ass yeah. so much? I think even the new government is not as kiss-ass as he was. He was the most kiss-ass politician in Georgian history. Shevardnadze wasn't that nice to Russia. Too. He had his issues, and uh, yeah. well, Gamsar Khudia was a really, really hardcore nationalist. So you know his, his opinion. And then this new government, you know, is still nice to. They, they still want to join, which is I don't understand why. You know, stupidity. You know, because they, not stupidity. They know what they're doing. But the point is, it's just he was the worst one. I think you know, he's so blatantly, you know, just trying to create problems. You know. Yeah. With, yeah, you see, and man, and also you mentioned Ukraine, and you know, Ukraine had also had a color revolution. It's called Orange Revolution, right? Next year after the after the Georgian Revolution of the Roses, uh, but um, still, you probably know that Ukraine was also involved in helping Georgia in the war against Russia. What what are your thoughts on what do you know about that about the Ukrainian? role in aiding the Georgian cause against Russia. Yeah, I saw a video of a Ukrainian girl, and I was reading also Brother Nathaniel. He's a, he's a, uh, ortho, you know, you know Brother Nathaniel? He's yeah, a yeah, Jew. Yeah, I know. He's, he's a, a Orthodox convert from the Jew. Yeah, he's a good man, but he, he posted on his website, Real Jew News, where he's talked about Putin makes, uh, or Putin makes all, you know, kind of, uh, he said something. Putin was angry at the, who was the president at that time? I forget his name, Yukashenko? The one who gets, you know, this kind of disease. Oh, Yushenko, Yushenko. 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 The one who gets the deformed face later. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Something happened to him. I don't know what happened. Anyway, 
the, the one before the one that was overthrown, the, the one before. Mm -hmm. He was good friends with Saakashvili, yes, and uh, yes, he did help, Ukraine did help uh, Georgia a lot. So, and uh, that's why I guess some Georgians say, oh, we need to help Ukraine because Ukraine helped us, you know. But I think, yeah, yeah, Ukraine did help Georgia, yes, this is true. This is true, I studied this, and Saakashvili even thanked them. Actually, Belarus, Belarus actually had the best position. Belarus was very neutral yeah. uh, with this regard. They weren't friendly, you know. They 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 didn't they didn't have any input, you know. He's a good man. I really like that leader in Belarus. I think he's a good man. You know, he just he does what he needs to do for his country. You know, he's yeah. he's also really friendly with Putin. But he was not, you know, he didn't involve. He said he like, you know, I think he was actually did like him a little bit. You know, they got along, you know, as well. But the point is that a lot of countries, yeah, put their stakes in Georgia. You know, yeah, all this kind of and this little country in the Caucasus, you know, and they. Investing so much, you know, that's how desperate they are to start the conflict with with Russia. You know, if Georgia was just Georgia alone, first of all, Georgia would have not, have not done what they did by themselves, because they, yeah. many of the soldiers, I'm sure the soldiers believe this, and maybe even Sakashvili, they believe, oh, if we attack and Russia retaliates, oh, America, you, Europe, and everyone's gonna come and start the war with Russia. No, <laughs> that's not what happened. Uh, Israel, which funded Georgia a lot. Russia told them, Israel, what the fuck is yeah. this about? And Israel yeah. said, okay, they stopped selling arms. They stopped selling arms. Oh, yeah. So they abandoned them. They abandoned them later. You know, because because the thing is, Russia's good friends with Iran. So yeah. I guess its mentality was, okay, Russia, if you're going to support the Iranians, we're going to support the Georgians. This is all political. They don't give a shit. There's actually a lot of, there was actually a George, there, are, there were a few dual citizens in the Georgian government. Not just yeah. Georgia citizens in the government at this time you know, you know what their loyalty is going to be like I mean it's mostly yeah. to Israel but they still you know they got to put that oh we, we love Georgia I think even at the embassy there's a Russian embassy in the, the Israel yeah. and Georgian Jews were saying Russian aggression uh, you know all this shit and you know I guess some of them may you know may do it because they like Georgia or whatever but still the government was full it had a, there's a many not a lot but there was a decent amount which no one mentions this of dual citizen fucking Israelis. They some of them even spoke Hebrew. <laughs> like they spoke fluent Hebrew, Georgian in Hebrew. Wow. So yeah, it's crazy. I studied I read this in one of these articles from uh, wired.com. So it's crazy, you know, and the uh, Israel had a big influence in this. And people just think, oh it's just some kind you know, it's just, it's just Russia and Georgia and Ossetia. No no one else is involved. No. A lot of strings are to this, right? So that's what people need to realize. So, it's very big. So, you know, people always like to call Putin, you know, he's a Zionist or he's this. Yeah. And we talked about this last time. And yeah. Many times we talk about this with, uh, with all, maybe with Ivy events too. Yeah. Uh, like I said, maybe, you know, yes, Russia is not, is kind of friendly with Israel too in a way. Yeah, I know this. But but there's a lot of Israel in, in, in the Ukraine situation. How, how many yarmulke wearing people supporting, some of them even wear yarmulkes who support the, yeah. the Ukraine. Then wear the fucking yarmulke on, <laughs> the Israelis. Yeah. You know, supporting the uh, Ukrainian, you know, junta, right? Or the yeah, military, yeah. whatever the fuck is there, you know? Yeah. Over there. So, if there's two sides to this, you yeah. know, it's not just, oh, look, you're Russian, you know, because I remember Shanae McCarthy. Yeah. I'm not going to get into this, but uh, but she made this video, right, about Dugan, right? Yeah. And uh, I'm going to mention this real quick, because she mentioned, oh, this guy, Alvador Eskin, this, this Russian yeah. Jew. All right, so... He supported, you know, he was, you know, one who was really against, you know, he said, oh, she's, she wrote in the, in the text, he supported the wars against Georgia and Ukraine. Okay, this is true. I checked this. This is right. But she didn't make faction because she was too busy attacking Putin or Dugan yeah. or whatever. You notice, but uh, the thing is that, you know, Georgia, even Georgia had so many freaking, you know, Israeli involvement. No one knows about it. It's two sides. If you don't like Russia, fine, but you got you to gotta acknowledge this. You can't say that one side is good. You know, the Ukrainian Nazis yeah. are so good. You know, they're funded by Soros people. Yeah. I think even the the this Rose Revolution, I think it was funded by Soros. I'm not I'm sure it was. And they try, and now they recently they got Armenia, but they were trying to get Armenia for many years. Yeah. Plan their, their whole uh plan is to uh, what's it called? Uh, get rid of uh, Russian power, you know. They don't want Russia to be a strong country. They want their own global dominance. They don't want any competition. They don't want Russia or China or anybody to have political power, you know. So that's yeah. this is 
aim. This is their aim. And uh, <clears throat> like I said, after the end of the Soviet Union, you, you would think that, you know, they would just get, you know, West Ger East Germany would become part of Germany. Okay. But then they get Poland. They get all this stuff. They get, you know, Montenegro. They get all these yeah. countries. Macedonia, pretty much, except for Serbia, every Balkan country is part of the fucking NATO yeah, now. Yeah. Except for Serbia, which, I, gee, yeah. I wonder why, because they bombed them in 99. Yeah. They even bombed the fucking Chinese embassy, but that's besides the point. Anyway, they gain all these territory. you know, Spain is part of it, Portugal's part of it, Finland's yeah, not. Yeah. It's a good thing. Finland's not, but yeah. Sweden, I don't think Sweden is either, but Norway is it, Denmark's in there, Ger Germany, France, you know, all, there's so many countries. Yeah. And, and then you have the Baltic states, all three of them, which have more Russian minorities in there, yeah. you know? And the thing is, too, uh, George doesn't have Russian minorities. They really did. I mean, they had Russians who lived there, but that wasn't the problem. The problem was the Ossetians. But yeah. in the Ukraine, in the Baltic states, and maybe maybe in Central Asia, because you know the Russians lived there. You know, many Russians went down there. You know, uh, during the Soviet period, you know, they went to live there. And many of them fear, which they have a right to fear, if like of their sa safety. Maybe since they're part of NATO, they don't give a shit. They could you know uh, mistreat them like they were doing in the Eastern Ukraine, and you know how they were mistreating them. They fear, and that's why Russia wants to protect their own people. Uh, you know, Putin can't go full force into you know Eastern Ukraine; they'll yeah. start the you know fucking world war. But this is why people are very concerned. You know, and in the Baltic states, they're very afraid. You know, the, the Russian minority there. You know, and they're like, you know, am I going to be oppressed? Are we going to be killed? Is the government going to start persecuting us? That's the problem. And it's a similar situation to the First World War. You know, First World War, you have uh, displaced people, Germany, right? You know, all these. New countries are formed, right? Czechoslovakia form, Poland becomes a country, yeah. you know, Western Germany is part of it, all this stuff. And then, you know, not Slavic in all cases, you know, Czechs or whatever, all yeah. these people, you know, they don't get along with the Germans. And then, the, you know, then they want to get these territories back because they want to, you know, they want their country back to the same size and they want to protect their own people. I'm not comparing Putin to Hitler at all. I'm just saying this is a similar situation where my, you know, after an empire, or something, it was an empire. It was a bit. It was the Russian Empire, except it was communist ideology, and it collapsed. Yeah. And so many displaced people. Putin even said this in one of the interviews. Like, yeah, after Soviet place, then how many people were displaced? You know, in completely new, hostile lands. Yeah. Some, uh, some weren't, but you know, that's what the case is. And that's, uh, this was their plan to create kind of tension for an excuse. I'm sure that these uh, these psychopaths in the world, they don't mind if they don't care. If Putin, if Putin attacks. The Eastern Ukraine will be like, oh, this is good. We could just now we can start the war. They want the war. They don't want to have peace. They want the war. They want to get rid of it because they don't care if it was nuclear freaking winter. They'll start yeah. the war. You know, if Russia didn't have nukes, I guarantee you they would have nuked. They would have bombed them a long time ago. They would have been at like like the Belgrade. They would have fucking destroyed them. But you know, thankfully they got nukes. You know, whatever how many methods they did, they they got the nukes right. So, but still, some of them are that crazy. They'll start the nuclear war. You know, yeah. they don't because they have their own bunkers. I talked about this in our, our first other. It's yeah. just, it's just, it's just, it's just sick. You know, it's just sick. You know. Yeah, and do you think are there any chances of uh, Georgia getting into NATO, but like, become a full-blown like a NATO member? No, because you know the thing is, after this war, I, I kiss it goodbye. You know, because now this. Yeah situation there because they, they have a conduct they have rules they have this you know this yeah. kind of outline they could have may have joined it before the war you know maybe they could have maybe they would have i don't know and with ukraine they could have before this war but now yeah. you know, they said goodbye you know so people who want to join nato you're, you're delusional you're not going to join nato yeah. anyway you, you you fucked it up <laughs> you fucked up your chances anyway so you know yeah. but you know then they can't join but there's still people who believe they can, which is very, like I said, they don't read the fucking rules of the NATO, yeah. you know, themselves, you know, because, you know, how many times, I remember one time Mike Pence was in Georgia last year, a few months ago, he said, you know, we are fully committed to Georgia's aspirations to join NATO. I'm like, no, you're not, and they can't join, like, they can't. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just, just all, lip service. Yeah, it's just bullshit. And so, you know, these people who are pro-NATO, even if you don't like Russia, you're wasting your time, just, just. Fucking let it go. You can't. You're not gonna get NATO. Fuck you. You're not getting part of my life. You're not gonna get anything. They're not gonna okay. give you anything. You you you, you sacrificially ruined everything. Okay. He, essentially, any chances you had, that asshole ruined it with this, this war. And if he didn't start the war, he you know if he did something else, he may, maybe. But 
even so, I don't think they could do it because you're on this separate turret. Because then the problem is they would not have Alcazar or Seti. Georgia would look like you know something different, right? The, the Georgia record, you know, the territory boundaries, and they could not recognize. It, it would be like this Georgia is part of NATO, but then Alcazar and Seti are not. You know, they won't be part. So you know, it's just it's just weird. But like I said, Georgia borders Turkey, so they'll be which is part of NATO. So I guess they want to have everyone getting closer and closer to. You know, encircling Russia. You know, because Georgia is like, you know, on Turkey's border, yeah. and they'll be in there next to Russia. So it's it's perfect for them. But they can't get it now. I'm sure they wanted to get it. You know, they want to. I mean, look, look how they got the, the the Balkan countries and the even Baltic states, right? Yes. They they were trying to, but they there's there's no way that uh, uh, Georgia can join, uh, or any even the Armenia because they only have their complex too in the Karabakh and the, this new government. You know, if if they even if they start saying you want to join it? You're not going to join NATO. You're not. You know. You're just delusional. You're just living your fantasies. So. Oh that's yeah. So I'm sure you actually. I know you are. I know. Maybe maybe it's not correct to call you like a Russophilic or Russophile like yeah. person. But but uh, you certainly are not anti-Russian, and you know the truth. You don't buy the bullshit. You don't fall for the bullshit that the mainstream media is peddling you about it. Oh, it's evil Russians in attack, invaded Georgia, and you see, and many of uh, adequate American media and American people who are not like hardcore brainwashed, they do recognize that it was actually Georgia who started the war. But still, how do you deal with people, um, you personally, I mean, how do you deal with people, including with your fellow Georgians who live in the U.S. or even in Georgia itself, who say, no, what are you talking about? It's Everybody knows that it's Russia actually invaded. And how do you deal, how do you try to convince them or red pill them? Well, my thing is, though, I could be called Rosophilic, you know. I don't think that's an insult, you know, people like, you know, because like, people like to use these words like, oh, you're an Islamophile, you kissed it. The thing is, though, I just tell the truth. You know, my, yeah. my purpose is, I mean, people like to call me as I get involved in some of these circles, national, socialist, you know, fascist, whatever. I'm mostly just into for the truth. I mean, this is my yeah. purpose. I just want to tell the truth. Whatever the fuck the angle is, right, if it's more yeah. Russian linked or it's more this, it's this, 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 my job is to tell the truth. Because I think it's my because there's no Georgians really talking about this who speak English, uh, you know, and Georgians who will yeah, outside. And my that's why I make my channel to. Uh, I haven't made a lot of videos about this. I make other videos. I should talk about this. I should make videos about this. But yeah, yeah there's a lot of people, even some in my family. I I I, think I showed you a Facebook post of one of my relatives. You know, she said you know, this little Facebook banner they had. Yeah, it's like yeah. Georgia and I'm occupied by Russia. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> you know, I said. It's unfortunate. I don't like to fight with people. I'm not like, you're fucking... But I do try to debate with them. But, you know, some of them people... My relatives, I don't want to deal with it anymore. Because, you know, if I, if I want to fight with them all the time. You know, there's few relatives are like this. But um, but people who live in America... As I, have a, I have a godmother... Not godmother. A friend who lives in Brooklyn. He lives in Brooklyn, right? A lot of, a lot of you know, Eastern European migrants you know, yeah. came... It's in Brooklyn, and I, I don't know. Is there every? They're in fucking Brooklyn. I don't know what the fuck is with Brooklyn. <laughs> they're living there, Ukraine's living there, fucking Jews live there. Everyone lives in Brooklyn. Fuck. Anyway, I don't, but they do. And he, I talked to him, and he said, you know, he was more anti-Russia than than me, of course. But you know, he was. But I did tell him that. Uh, I told his family, like NATO, you know, they didn't do anything for you. Why do you? You sacrificed yourself, right? You sent troops there. Some troops even died in the. Stupid Iraq and Afghanistan. This was not even yeah. your war. Yeah, no. Yeah. Business. So they don't give you anything. You wasted your fucking soldiers. They're not a good ally. You don't like Russia, fine, but don't leave fucking just ignore NATO. Just don't. Just be yourself. Just say fuck yeah. everything. I think it's better to be nice to Russia because Russia's right there. It's right in yeah. your north doorstep. It's the biggest country. If they really wanted to, they could just take you over. Which they're not. They don't want to do that. But I'm saying my purpose. My my point is. If Russia really wanted to just take over Georgia, right, like Soviet Union, they could have yeah. done it. They could have done it. People like to portray, but, oh, this ex-KGB, he's going to build a Soviet No, he doesn't. He could have. He could have really well taken over these countries. It's not yeah. hard. He beat them in five days. What makes yeah. you think in a few other days he could have took Gori, Tbilisi, Tbilisi. everything? He's yeah. next to it. Yeah, it's Gori and Tbilisi are right next to the fucking yeah. East, probably. It's not hard. They could do it. Yeah. <laughs> they, have a, they have an easy way of getting there. So... My, my, all I tell them is that, you know, what has NATO done for you? And then they kind of, most of them, they kind of look at me like most, the most rational ones, some of them are not, but some of them will be like, 
shit. You know, then they, then they stop talking. They kind of just... That's usually what people do when they realize they're wrong. They kind of shut the, shut up, you know? Yeah. That kind of proves my point that when, when people... When you prove a point and people don't respond and they kind of go like... You prove your point, you know? So that's what I do, most part. But <clears throat> there are people that I unfortunately... And in my family, not a lot. It's like two or three, but yeah. I have a big family. But it's, it's unfortunate you can't really change that, you know, because they really, they like I said, they really, they're so, they are so, they believe so much that European Union and NATO is so good for them. It'll be such a good idea. And so many people want to leave the European Union. It, some Georgians really believe that the European Union is like some kind of, you know, unitary of European people, European culture. You know, what, 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 what do the European Union countries look like? importing uh, Arabs and Africans and they're secretly to destroy their, uh, you know, identity. Yeah, the family, the fucking, the propaganda yeah. of homosexuality, this excessive yeah, propaganda. And, uh, yes, and the thing is, too, in Georgia, they, and in Ukraine especially, but there was a time in 2013, yeah. there was a fucking gay pride parade in fucking Georgia. In Georgia. Yes! My father saw this, and, and, and you know, Ilya and the, the Georgian priests, and they, had, they rallied, like, what the fuck is this about? Yeah. You know, they, Tried, they stopped it. They were like, you know, stop this madness, you know? I believe what this, this Serbian guy said, a Serbian patriarch, I, f I think he's the head patriarch, I forget his name. I da ih prati, i da ih čuvamo, nažalost, od naroda hrišćanskoga, kome je to veliki sram. Like I said, I don't care. You know, they could shut me down for hate speech for all they want, but I, we do never accept this. And most Georgians don't accept it. So, you know, why the fuck you want to join people that want to, that want to destroy not only your ethnic identity, but your fucking... But your family. Your morality. Yeah, your, your culture, your history. Yeah. You know, Caucasian people, they're very traditionalist, you know, yeah. most traditional people. Uh, Slavs are too, but I'm just saying, the point is, you know, <clears throat> you know, Georgian dance and all this, yeah, you know, this yeah. clothes and shit. You get pride in yourself. <clears throat> I, I'm not Chechen, but Kadira made a good point. You know, they... Нету у нас геев. Если есть забрите в Канаду, хвала Аллаху, подальше от нас. А узабедляем на шейтуайна режим дома. Чтобы не было дома. But do you not get concerned when you read these accounts of young men who say they've been tortured for days? Does it concern you as a matter of law and order in the Republic when you hear these stories? He's a little bit more, I would not be as aggressive as him, but the point is that, yes, we don't allow this. This is, this is, they are devils. Now, I'm not going to say, but they are, they are degenerates. They are degenerates. Yeah, they're degenerates, absolutely. They're degenerates, and then we don't accept them. I'm not going to fucking throw them off a cliff. You know, this is not 14th century or something, or, yeah, you know, yeah. but you and me and most people just say, get the fuck away and, and just leave yeah. us. Just don't, don't touch children, which made them. They do that. You know, a lot of them are degenerate like that. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of people in this country, I, like I said, they're not going to stop. I, I saw the shows uh, are promoting pedophilia. There's a show, Rick and Morty, you know, have pit they, they made jokes about this. You know, they're going to normalize. Like I, I said this to you months ago. Yeah. They're going to do it. And I'm not the only one who said it, but it's true. It's happening. And I'm just saying, well, shit. So if, even, if they make, even if homosexuality was not such a bad thing, but they gotta keep going further and further. They're gonna keep yeah. chopping down every norm until you become is this tolerance bullshit. You have to be tolerant of homosexuals. You have to understand them. <clears throat> and then you gotta be homo then for transgender, you have to understand they don't understand. They want to be themselves. They they were they were they they believed that they were women. <laughs> they believed they, you know, yeah. they, and then they gotta be oh then they're gonna say, Oh, it's okay. Pedophilia is just normal. No. Yeah, fuck you. And then incest. And, you know, fucking, it's okay to fuck your cousin or to fuck your sister. <laughs> fuck your mother or something. It's okay. Do, is this satanic philosophy? Do thou wilt. This is Aleister Crowley shit, you know. Yeah, Do yeah. what you want. Have fun. Yeah. Give a shit. Drink. Drink alcohol. Be, be, go fuck around and with multiple men and, you know, have no fucking, you know, don't wear condom and you get abortion and all this other, 
all this other shit. And then, you know, and then, yeah. oh yeah, fucking your, fucking your dog is cool, man. Like, it's, that's what oh, they'll do. Fuck. Yeah, that's BCL. That's the last phase. I think yeah, in Canada, that's... there was a case where this guy got away with fucking his dog. Like, this is really sick people. Very sick people. They're gonna, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's not just, people think this is just a fringe element of society, right? They, yeah. Well, they are. But the people in power will, will fucking force this. And then people will become so brainwashed, and they because they make jokes about it. They yeah. make jokes. When you can joke about it, people go, oh, it's funny. It's not funny. It's not but funny at all. You condition people to accept things. I know I'm getting a little bit off topic, but this is what they're happening. They're trying to condition people all across the world to, to, to think like they do. They're sick, mental people. He's, they hire. I mean, people, I was watching <laughs> when this when Trump got elected, this Pizzagate shit. Yeah. I used to think, oh, they're exaggerating. No, they're not. I think I don't think they are anymore. I, I really looked into it. I think it's, yeah. I think there's a. It's not. You know, they had this this scandal about. Uh, oh, you know, they're fucking around with women, right? This this fucking uh, Bill Cosby thing and all this shit. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You know, you think this is so bad? Or Trump said grab them by the foot. Dude, there are people who fucking molest children and they don't get and they get away with it. So, this is a sick world. It's a sick world, and uh, I guarantee you, you know, if Sakushili, I think he's he's rumored. This is rumored. I'm not sure. And he yeah. fucked around with a transvestite. I don't know if this is true. He did. I showed you that funny song. Uh, is a Russian song. They were making fun of him. That he, he. I read about this. That he probably. He's a, he's a sick person. But anyway, yeah. it is people like him are sellouts. They yeah. don't care. They just care about themselves. You know, they're not that yeah. degenerate. They don't. They don't. Fuck all. They care. Yeah. And I was like, I get whores. I get money. I live my life like this. Yeah. So this is sick people. Yeah. And this is what they want. And so man, they're gonna. This is why NATO's not good because they, in EU because they get yeah. you know they get rid of God from their constitution. And Georgia is a is a deeply devout Orthodox Christian country, yeah. and the, even ones who are not the Muslim one. You think the Muslim Georgians are gonna want this too? No, fuck no. Or or even the Azeri or Armenian minority. No, they're not. No, no one fucking wants this. Nobody yeah. wants. This. Most people don't. They don't want it. It's just it's just to destroy their culture. And this is this is what they the leaders of the European Union, the leaders of NATO, the leaders of the, the banking system and everything, at the top of the pyramid, right? This is what they want to do. And uh, Russia, like I said, has not completely said fuck you. I said this before to New World Order, but yeah. like I said they do things that they they at least try themselves to not kill themselves. Yeah. If it goes wrong, they, they get maybe the, and the economy collapses, they'll collapse too. But <clears throat> they will not turn their people into degenerate soulless sick people like yeah. i guarantee you if whole world collapses i think maybe the more sane people will survive like if there's a fucking yeah. economic collapse because there might be a collapse so you never know and uh, yeah it happens maybe sick degenerate people and those who are lazy people they're gonna die off they're gonna just yeah. die like you know good riddance to many of them to be honest with you but sometimes yeah. Old people are gonna die. Children are gonna die. You know, like like they like, like when they when they put sanctions on a country, the weakest will die, and the strongest people, the most strong one, will, will survive. survive yeah. yeah, and when you have breakdown of family in America and and Western Europe, and even in Eastern Europe too, they they started this. You will not. Family is a strong unit. The nuclear family is a strong yeah. unit. You know, you have a mother, a father, and a child, and maybe brother and sister and uncle. You have them all working together. You could survive something. You could survive an economic collapse. The Soviet Union, right? All these yeah. countries, people died, but they still were able to survive. My fucking, my family had to. Uh, they had they had no warm warm water. They had, they had no lights, yeah. but I, they were able to conceive me. I exist. So <clears throat> that's how powerful family is. It kept people together. I, I'm sure you were born around the time this collapse happened. It was a very bad time. I'm sure. Yeah. And but the, you, you survive, you exist, you're alive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I guarantee you, this shit happened in America, yeah. especially with people who have no family and fucking, you know, and, and, holy shit, how many people are gonna die? If the so if the same thing happens to America, like over there, holy shit, it'll be like not just a few million, it'll be oh my god, tens of yeah. millions of people are gonna fucking die. Many yeah. people will just see, many of these illegal men, they'll, they'll go back to like, fuck this, I'm not staying here anymore. Everyone's gonna leave. It'll be so bad. So yeah. uh, it just it just shows how. They have a wicked agenda. These people, yeah. they have a wicked agenda too. It's just they have a long-term plan. It's to genocide people. You know, it's just to destroy anyone. They don't. They don't. Like I said, they like to play off Ukraine against Russia, but they don't give a fuck about Ukraine. If Ukraine get nuked or something, who cares? Fuck them. If Kiev gets yeah. nuked 
all their history and all their people get fucking burned, even they ban the right assholes. They don't care. They like, fuck them. Yeah. Good useful idiots. Good for you. Bye bye. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you. You know, the same with Georgia. Even if Saakashvili get new, they don't care. Even if fucking Putin kills Saakashvili or something, which you know, he's really asking for. He's really fucking like going like he's really trying to irritate Russia. You know, yeah. and push them. I'm not. I'm not advocating for this. Of course not. But even if Putin or someone were to get rid of Saakashvili, do you think they would care? No, they would look for someone else. Yeah. They're just tools. Saakashvili, what's his name? Uh, fucking, you, what's that one? Poroshenko? They're tools. Yeah. So these leaders are tools. Even if they're pieces of shit, they yeah. have their purpose. And once they they serve their purpose, you can go in the garbage can. That's for yeah. they care. So well, let's see. What else? What else do you want to talk about before we can wrap it up, you know? <clears throat> well, yeah. I'm going to ask you the question, this question before we can, and we wrap it up. Uh, do you believe, do you think that uh, sometime a genuine like nationalist government who cares for Georgia's interest not going to kiss NATO's or either NATO's or Russia's ass and just uh, the government which is out for Georgia and Georgian people are not kissing kissing asses of either Russia or NATO. Do you think that such a government has chance to come to power in Georgia? I really hope so, but you know, Gamsar Kudi has children, so I, I think his son or one of his one of his relatives, he's very popular, and uh, he's running. You know, maybe he may get in power if he gets him, because Gamsar Kudi was one of those people. He was, he didn't hate Russia, but he was wanted his own thing. You know, he wanted his own country. He wasn't really nice. I mean, no, he was his own person. That's why they he got assassinated. So, yeah. um, maybe it's a possibility for like a Gamsar Kudi's relative or someone else. It's possible. I, yeah. I don't know, but like I said. The, my, my, my problem is, even if they were able to overthrow them, right? Yeah. My fear is, maybe they can counterattack, do another revolution, too, and throw yeah. them out. And, or start another war in Ajara or something. Then Turkey could do something. You know, yeah. they, always, they always have their cards in the table. So, that's what bothers me. You know, like, Georgia is too small to really, you know, like I said, if they try to do something, it's easy to fuck them. Russia is bigger. And yeah. they try to throw Putin, I think. They had their color revolutions in Russia. They tried, attempted. Yeah, they tried attempted. to, you know. Yeah, and they failed. But yeah. Georgia is small and Armenia is small. It is easy. Yeah. Shit, yeah. Iran, they tried almost. They almost got it in Iran. Yeah. They tried their best. These people are unrelenting. So even if, like, let's just say I was there. I mean, I don't know if I could be, because I was American-born. But let's just yeah. say uh, I learned the language of Georgia and I study. I'm a citizen. I am a good, yeah. small I I do my time there. Yeah. And I run, and then all of a sudden, I'm leader. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just making a point. And I come there, I make my uh, relationship. I tell NATO, is there jo NATO people kind of still in Georgia? Not, not bases, but they're around. I tell them, get the fuck out, go away, go yeah. away. Now, I, then I, let's just say I'm too young to be president. But if I were to call like Russian leadership and say, listen, NATO, NATO people are gone. I'm not going to be part of EU. I want to have. Can you please at least let some Georgians go home? There, I mean, we will make we will we will establish diplomatic ties again. We will yeah. reestablish. Just please let some Georgians go there and yeah. unite them. You can have your forces there for a while. In the beginning, you yeah. can have your troops there. You can monitor. Just let some Georgians go home because there's, there's there's refugees there. You need to go. They need to go back. You know, <clears throat> that's another thing. No one European Union doesn't give a shit about Georgian refugee or Ukrainian refugee. Yeah. They, Muslim or African right ones. They don't yeah. give a shit about you know white ones. So they don't they don't care. It doesn't yeah. suit. Purpose. But the point is, can we please make a deal? And I'm guarantee if it was if it's Putin, I, I'm not sure if it's a different leader. But Putin himself, yeah. he he really would do it. I'm sure and he would yeah. do it. And I would just say, all right. But but unfortunately, imagine if someone assassinate me or some shit happens, right? Yeah. Or, you know, overthrow me, right? And they could just do the same shit. We could be in the same shit again. Then fucking they do this shit, and then fucking Russia gets has to you know break off ties again. It's the problem. We need whole world for the most part i don't believe this is this may sound communist whatever but i don't believe in world revolution but i believe but i believe in the uprising because you need yeah. to have enough countries to rebel if you have one little yeah. country who just says fuck you they get destroyed look at libya yeah. look at fucking iraq look at the yeah. syria is destroyed i mean he, yeah, he's yeah. Still, but they destroy his you know how much isis destroyed their historic yeah. relics their history yeah. is destroyed they destroyed their beautiful damascus with a beautiful yeah. city 10 years ago yeah. It's so evil what they've done, but you know, one country or two countries in the Caucasus, if, even if Georgia and Armenia work together, no, they, they'll destroy it. But if there's many countries, at least with common interest, I'm not, I don't, like I said, common interest to fight this, 
we can do something. So I don't believe in people want to say, oh, we need a national socialist or whatever. Listen, don't you adopt national socialism or some other philosophy like you know Gaddafi type thing? They'll destroy it. They will not yeah. allow this to exist. This is what the, his name is Varvikinus. He's Norwegian. Yeah. I mentioned it before. He said, "What? I don't want to. I'm nothing. I don't, I don't hate the philosophy, but the problem is, you're going to end up like Germany. You're going to end up yeah. like Germany." Firebombed? You you want this? No, I don't want this. So who knows what the solution is? People always debate what's the political solution. My point is is self reliant. I believe in self reliance. You know. Yeah. Well, like I said, um, the government doesn't give a shit. Georgian government doesn't give a shit. They won't watch this video. <laughs> they don't care. Yeah. Um, what you and me have to say. You know, we can yeah. make five videos. They don't care. You know, it doesn't. They don't. It doesn't matter. So. Yeah. I believe that people who watch this video should keep this in mind that you must become self reliant. Don't. Yeah. Don't you know? People love Trump. People like to say, "Oh, Trump's gonna do this," or, or, or you know, if even if M Marie Le Pen won, oh, she's gonna do something. Front national. Listen, no one's going to help you. You have to help yourself. Yeah. And Putin, people believe Putin's gonna help. Yeah, Putin's gonna help his country. Putin is yeah. always for. Putin's not this white messiah thing. You know, that's the problem. There's two people. People call Putin this Jewish evil man, right? And then there's people yeah. who like go too far. Putin's gonna save the whole world. He's gonna like. He's a crusader. Right? No. No. Putin is the leader for Russia, and he will, you know, he once he's his time is gone, he's gone. You know, he, yeah. he's not a dictator for life. He's just, he's just the leader for his time, and he's there at the right time for his people. Yeah. That's all. His, but you as a whole, you must, you must rely on yourself. Don't depend on yeah. Russia or Putin or China or what. Fucking do it for yourself. Yeah. Don't because because it's foolishness. Because if you like, for example, if you're in the war and you're waiting for someone to help you, and they don't come help you, you're fucked. So yes. fight as hard as you can, and if you lose, you lose. But at least you, you, you didn't lose like you can get this like fucking easily destroyed. At least you yeah. fought hard. Yeah. So that's Absolutely. the thing. yeah. But maybe like I said, if if it wasn't for Russia, Syria would be gone. You know, yeah. Syria would have been dead. So yeah. this is two sides. Make an alliance with Russia, but just help. But but for the ordinary people, you need to just take care of yourself. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Make. Make make videos. I think I don't think it's pointless to make videos. Yeah. I think because people do share. I, I looked at yeah. my people do share some of my videos. I'm sure yeah. they share your videos too. Yeah. I I share some of your videos to some people. You know, it's it's yeah. good because you spread the message. Now, yeah. We have this nationwide reach like CNN and all these other media, and we don't have this money. Yeah. You know, even the littlest contribution, more people like who knows how long it's gonna take, but more people are realizing it. I believe so yeah. because it's resonate. I, if, even if I was your age, um, yeah. like, like I am now or something, I guarantee you I would have been probably fooled by their propaganda too. But now people are starting to, you know, just take off the blindfold, you know, throw this yeah. shit away. Because people are getting sick and tired because the, they see what's happening. And I just I just hope for, for George's case that yeah. this new government does not do any, does not, doesn't do anything stupid. And yeah. I hope there will be a legitimate uprising over there. Uh, real good, like those people I showed, those Georgian protesters, they, they're part of a political party, I think. If they are able to take power in next election or something, yeah. that'll be very good. But recently they elected a new prime minister. He's an, he's, he's an asshole. So that's unfortunate. Uh, maybe yeah. they, who knows if the people even voted, who knows if these people were even legitimately elected, you know, who, who knows if it's rigged or not. They're just, they're just there. But uh, it's just not, not really a democratic society, you know, they oligarchs run it, you know. Yeah. Uh, Eastern Europe is, you know, not just people like Russia, the oligarchs, like Georgia is, or, or Ukraine is, I mean, I'm sure they all are. They all have these oligarchies running yeah. their country. So it's unfortunate, you know, you can't, it's really hard for someone, especially now. You know, the last major resistance was Gaddafi. And he, you know, when did he come into power? Yeah. In 1969? Completely yeah. different time. Yeah. Completely different country. I don't know if it's even possible for us to do something like this ever again. Yeah. You know, at best we could do something like Russia did, right, with Putin, you know, coming in there. You know, he kind of was part of it, like Yeltsin put him there, but then when Putin, in a few years, he started to, you know, do some things right, you know, he come into power yeah. slowly. He, so that's the only way, I think. But, you know, people, that's not, a, but we're such in a horrible situation. People like, we don't want it. We want solution now. People are so, in pain. they're not patient, which I don't blame them, you know, they see what's happening. Like I said, they're promoting pedophilia, like for fuck's sake, you gotta do something. I mean, yeah. I lost my mind, so I'm like, we gotta, we gotta do something. And someone told me, Oh George, you're just going. You're not going to. Oh, you gotta say something because you know it's gonna keep. Uh, very soon, in two years, fucking your dog is not the. It's a sexual orientation. It's a preference. Like you know, oh, wow. they'll they'll say that at, at least in this country, or Canada. Canada, especially. Yeah. Who knows? 
what yeah. the fuck, you know, this is what's going to happen. And yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, they have political censorship. Recently, like we talked about this privately, that you, Alex Jones got censored. And uh, yeah, yeah. I, don't agree, I don't agree with everything Alex Jones says. I think he's, a, you know, the sinful. Like, if they can ban him, what makes you think they can't destroy people like us? Yeah, what, yeah. I told, what I just said in this interview could be classified as hate speech, according to them. What I just said about homosexuality, and now that since they're promoting pedophilia, they'll say, oh, you're against pedophiles, oh, you're, you're hate speech. Oh, fuck you, yes, I, I did say it. But <laughs> anyway, they'll say, oh, what I said about uh, oh, Sakashuli is, is, a, is, 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 is a threat or something. They'll, they'll make all kinds of shit to just do yeah. it. I, I don't want anything bad to happen. To I'm not, I don't advocate. I'm just saying he's a piece of shit and he's done nothing good for Georgia. I want him. Sakashuli just, my point for him is just to go to fucking Netherlands. If he can go to Netherlands and live with his wife and his son, yeah. his son, he's younger than me. Take care of your son. I'll be okay. I don't like him. I'll, I, I still hate him, but I want—I just don't want to hear him anymore. I want him yeah. just to go and just live, leave alone. Just, just go away, go hide, and live your life. No one wants to deal with you. Even they give him two-minute interview. So no one gives you, you, you you this shit. What you have to say, Sakashuli? No one cares. Yeah, Por absolutely. Even Porsche will get sick of that. No one wants to deal with this man. But the point is, it's just a, you know. Point is, um, they'll, they'll, who knows what's hate speech? These people, they'll, they'll shut you down because maybe I, I, I said one thing bad about the Israel. They'll say, oh, that's anti-Semitic, right? You hate, all, you wanna, you wanna kill, you, you are advocating violence against Jews or something. They'll, they'll say this. I'm not. I'm just saying that. What the fuck? The Israel's involvement, but they don't care. They, their definition of hate speech is, is selective. They don't have a good rule. It's not just seek Kyle. It's like it's not if I had, if, if I had, if, even if it. It's not just having – this is not a Nazi flag. This is a Georgian flag. But if it, it, it was – it's not just having a Nazi flag. It's hate speech to them. It's, yeah. That's not – hate speech to them is anyone who's criticizing them. Yeah. This could be – I don't even know what kind of flag. But, you know, it could be any normal flag like this one. They don't, yeah. they'll shut down. I don't have – there's no swastika. It's just a cross. Four yeah. cross. One big cross. You yeah. can have the Russian flag in your background. They can shut you down. You can put the blue, white, and red one in there or whatever. Anyone can put any flag. It doesn't matter. Their hate speech definition is bullshit. It's selective. It's a political thing that's to make an excuse for what they do. Oh, and uh, okay. who, who knows? Who knows what they'll do? So. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, I think it's time to wrap this up now. Sure. Yeah. Okay, okay, it's been nice talking to you. So this has been George in 1998. He was talking about uh, the Five Days War, Russo-Georgian War. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Bye, this was Soviet Russian Bear Show. Cheers.